So the number one conversation that I have with developers who are building agentic systems goes along the lines of this. Hi, I'm making an agent with Crew AI or Langchain or Strands Agents. Now I need to get this into production. I need it to scale. I need it to be secure. And I say, whoa, 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 hold on a minute. That's what AWS does best. So hold my mouse and I will show you how. So here is some agent code. It uses Strands Agents SDK and it runs just fine on my machine. To get this running at scale securely inside of AWS, we can deploy it using Amazon Bedrock Agent Core Runtime. So let me just add in the Agent Core SDK, create an instance of the app, then wrap my invocation. And that's all I need to do to get this code ready for Agent Core. Using the Agent Core Starter Kit CLI, I can run configure and then I can launch. And now my agent is built for me into a container and ready in Agent Core runtime. I can test it with the Toolkit CLI like this. And this is just one of the capabilities of Agent Core. So Agent Core Runtime, which we just saw, is a new type of serverless compute environment built specially for AI agents. What's great is that it can keep your agent up and running for up to eight hours at a time with each session getting its own micro VM. So you've got complete session isolation. And unlike Lambda functions, which are themselves serverless powerhouses, after you invoke a runtime session, you can come back to it again and again and again. You can call it multiple times while the session is still active. And it works with streaming data as well. Runtime is awesome. Then there's memory. It handles your agent's session state. So think conversational history and long-term storage. So things like user preferences. Memory is fully managed customizable and scales independently from your agent. So you can just bolt it in and go. Gateway lets you turn your existing APIs and Lambda functions into MCP tools that your agents can use or someone else's agents can use. Then there's Code Interpreter for secure code execution and the browser tool for web interactions. Both of these, again, are fully managed cloud hosted services. So you don't need to build and manage and scale your own containers. And then there's Agent Core Identity and Agent Core Observability, which are both specialized services for identity and observability in the agentic world. So just a quick note on how we get access to Agent Core. Just like other AWS services, there's a base API. So for Agent Core, this is split between a control plane API and a data plane API. So think of this as at configuration time and at runtime. So these APIs are available via the SDKs that you know and love. So for example, Bodo 3 for Python. On top of this, there's a specialized Agent Core SDK. This is a Python SDK with more languages to follow that builds on the base API and provides some convenience methods and functions to make it quick and easy to integrate Agent Core into your code. So an example of this is in the runtime code that we deployed before. Um, we used this SDK to add a decorator to the invocation method. That was the SDK. And then finally, we have the Starter Toolkit, a CLI tool that we've been using to get started quickly. So it builds the containers, it helps us test our agents, it does things like that. So as you progress with Agent Core, you might depend less and less on the Starter Toolkit, but it's a great place to get started, and that's why we're using it today. All right, let's jump back into the code and see how we can update our agent to use Agent Core memory. And so this is my updated code that I've got so that my agent can make use out of memory. So you'll see here that we've got the SDK import that we had before for runtime, but now we've got a couple in here as well for memory, as you might imagine. And so we've got two, we've got an integrations that works with strands config and an integrations that works with strands session manager. And so this is specifically for strands 
agent. And so if you're using a different kind of framework, such as Langchain or Crew AI, then you can still completely do this. Um, there are integrations available with some frameworks. Um, and you can also, of course, use the SDK directly or the API directly to be able to build this into anything that you want. What's happened here is that the Strands agents community has worked to build these integrations in. So we've got Sessions Manager and Config. Let's go and see where they're used. Um, before we get there, we've got this, which is passed in. So this is a an ID for the instance of memory that we're going to connect to. Now, for us in this particular case, that's going to be set up for us by the starter toolkit. So we'll have a look at that in just a moment. Um, so if we just scroll down here, I'm just going to skip over this for now, but I'll be back here in just a moment. Um, let's just go and have a look at the way that the agent's built up. So here's the agent code, very similar to what we had before, but now we've got this session manager here. And so the session manager is configured with the memory configuration there. So we've got the agent core um, memory session manager object configured with the memory configuration. So if we go and have a look at that, um, well, here it is just up above here. Um, and there's a couple of things here that are going into the configuration so that the agent can connect to the right part of the memory which has been um, set up for this type of agent, for this agent on my setup. And so those two things are the session ID and the actor ID. Of course, we have the memory ID itself so that we can connect to the right memory. Then we have session ID and actor ID. So this means that when we're connecting with memory, not only are we connecting to the right memory, I guess that's the memory ID, but we also connect to the memory which is to do with this particular user, that's the actor ID, and then this particular session, that's the session ID. ID. Um, and that means then that we can get things like the short-term memory from this session, but we can also get long-term memories from this particular user across all sessions, if that's what we wanted to do. And this is just a simple example of how to get set up with memory. Now, the other thing that you might have noticed is that this agent is actually contained inside of this function called get or create agent. And that's because we've got a bit of a race condition which happens here when our agent is invoked. So these two values, the session ID and the actor ID, these are only available to us when our agent gets invoked. But we need to have the agent in order for it to be invoked. So how do we deal with that? Well, if I scroll down to the invocation, the entry point that we've set up for Agent Core, what you'll notice is that it goes and runs, it goes and gets the agent from get or create agent, and we're doing some lazy loading here. So if this is the first time it's been called, then we look at our global agent variable. That's just one way to do it. Um, and if that doesn't exist, if it's none, then we go ahead and create that agent, and then we return it. If we come back and we're invoking our agent again within our up to eight hours of runtime that's possible with agent core runtime, then if we're coming back again, we go and get the existing agent. So we don't have to make it again. We don't have to connect to memory again. All of those sort of uh, computationally expensive things we don't have to do again. So we're doing our lazy loading. And that's all we need to do. And then the rest of the invocation is pretty much just like we had before. So we're back on the command line now, and we're going to use the starter toolkit to configure our agent again, and then launch our agent again. And this time, we'll step through in a little bit more detail so that we can see what's going on, and we can see where we actually set up memory. So I'm going to go ahead and enter on this. And so what's happening here is that the starter toolkit is stepping us through all the necessary bits and pieces that we need to get the agent set up. So it will create a role for us. It will do all the ECR configuration for us, where it's going to use code build to actually build up our container and then put it into ECR, which is a container repository for us. So that's all managed for us in the background by the starter toolkit. I do then need to select the dependency file. So this is our PyProject TOML file, or it could be a requirements.txt if that's how you're wor working. Um, and I just need to go and select the one from my deployment directory that I set up. So there it is, that's my PyProject TOML file. Um, then it's going to ask me about whether I want to set up some um, more sophisticated authentication using OAuth, which I don't for now, so I'm going to say no. Do I want to do any request header allow listing? I don't 
don't for now, so I'm going to say no. Um, and then it's going to move on to the memory configuration. So it's saying here that I do ex have an existing memory set up inside of my account. Um, so I have a couple of options. I can either use that memory or I can create a new memory or I can skip if I don't want to. And so the first time I launched this agent, I skipped because I wasn't using memory. This time I'm going to press enter to create a new memory storage area for my agent. So let's press enter. And it says, do you want to enable long-term memory extraction? So yes, yes I do. Um, and that's the configuration setup. Now it's important to know that this configuration step didn't actually deploy anything. What that's doing is setting up the configuration files ready for us to do the deployment using the launch command. So if I use the agent core launch command, um, then it's going to go through all of those steps. It's going to um, package up my agent. Um, it's going to use uh, code build to actually build up the container. It's going to put it into ECR for us, and it's going to put it up into agent core runtime. So look, the starter toolkit really is very helpful. And now the launch command has finished. I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes just to make sure that memory has finished its setup. And then we can go ahead and do some test invocation. So as we saw briefly before, we can use the starter toolkit to invoke our agent from our laptops, even though this is running up in the cloud. So I can just send this invoke command. I'm just going to say hello to the agent and see how it responds to us. Now, one thing to note is that with the agent code that we're using in this tutorial, in this example, um, it doesn't use a streaming response. Even though runtime totally can use a streaming response, it doesn't use it. And so in this case, we have to wait for the entire response before before it's going to be sent back to us. Anyway, that's happened whilst I've been talking and it's saying hello and getting back to us and talking about having a conversation with us. So let's go ahead and try and use some of its capability with its new memory capability. So I'm going to paste in a command here to invoke. Um, and look, I'm saying here, remember that I absolutely love hot tea, especially Earl Grey, and I prefer it with a splash of milk and one sugar. I'm also sending in a specific session ID. I do that so I can just be in control of it here as I'm invoking it from my command line. And I also send in an actor ID as well, just for now of user one, two, three. So let's send that into the agent um, and see what it responds to us with. Um, it will probably just say that's very interesting, isn't it? Because I didn't actually ask it a specific question. Um, so it says, yeah, I'll remember that you absolutely love hot tea, particularly Earl Grey. And then it talks some more about my preference of tea. OK, so I've waited 20 or 30 seconds because it takes just a little bit of time for a long term memory to be sort of realized and persisted. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to my agent again. So let me just paste in another command here. Now this time I'm saying what kind of hot drinks do I like and how do I prefer them to be prepared? Now in this case I'm sending in a session ID again but notice at the end here rather than hyphen A which is what we had before I've now got hyphen B. That means that I'm going to be talking to this agent in a different session. So this is a different um, container, micro VM, which is being spun up for me, a different runtime environment, a different session. But I've got the same actor ID coming in. So I want to see here that my agent has retained this long-term memory. And in effect, this could be me coming back to the agent the next day or the day after or in a couple of weeks time. So let's just hit enter on that and see what happens. And the agent comes back with, yeah, based on our previous conversations, you've shared that you absolutely love hot tea with Earl Grey being a particular favorite. So there we go. The memory has remembered my user preference. And in this case, it's my preference for tea. Integrating Code Interpreter is easy as well. Um, we could, for example, switch out the calculator tool that we've been using for Code Interpreter and then update the agent. And now our agent has access to a secure code execution environment. Finally, Sometimes we just need to see what's going on inside of our agent. If you've got Docker running on your machine, then you can use the starter toolkit to build and run your agent core runtime container on your own machine. When your agent's deployed, you can use the starter toolkit again, and it gives you the command you need to tail the logs out of CloudWatch. And when you want more detail and more detailed analysis of specifically the agentic loop and the performance of your agent, then there's a URL to get to the observability dashboard for your agent. Lots of information in there. So there you have it. We've taken an agent from running locally on my machine to being production ready in just a few minutes. 
with memory and code interpreter and observability. Of course, there's so much more. Agent Core gives you a complete platform for building enterprise-grade agentic applications. All of the code from this video is available in a blog post over on the AWS Builder Center. The link is in the description below, of course. And the post includes a lot more detail on all of the steps that I took and exactly what you need to get started. And if you use Crew AI or Langchain or Llama Index, well, maybe give Strands agents a go. But if you do use those frameworks, then I'll add some links in the description to posts on getting started on those frameworks with Agent Core as well. The best part of all of this is you can just use the capabilities of Agent Core that make sense for your existing or new project. So bolt in some memory or add that code interpreter scale the code with runtime. Use whatever framework you want. Use whatever LLM you want. You do you and do it on Agent Core. And then let me know what you're doing. Pop in the comments below. If you've got any questions, then don't hesitate to reach out. You can find out how to get in touch with me in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, then subscribe to the AWS Developers YouTube channel and click on the notification bell so that you know when a new video is being posted. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video really soon.